The universe is a symphony of strings. And the answer is that everything around us is a byproduct of string theory, including life. And let's say we have two solar systems that collide. What happens? Boom. There is no alternative to string theory. Life is impossible in a classical world. How do I know that? That's my equation. After 2,000 years of investigating the nature of matter and energy, we've come up with two great formalisms. One is the theory of the very big, that is, general relativity, which gives us the Big Bang and quasars and all the wonders of the universe, the theory of the very big. Then there's the theory of the very small, that is, the quantum theory. Now the problem is Mother Nature has a left hand and a right hand, quantum mechanics and relativity, but these two theories are incompatible. You put them together and what happens? They explode. And that is the greatest problem in all of physics. How to unify the theory of the very big, that is relativity, with the theory of the very small, which is the quantum theory. Now today, the leading theory in fact, the only theory which can bring about a unification of these two is called string theory. Very controversial. We don't know whether it's correct or not because we can't test the theory, but so far is the only game in town. You take a classical theory, a theory of Einstein, and then you add quantum corrections to it, and the theory is finite. People have tried to do this for decades and have failed. Every time you take relativity and try to add quantum mechanics to it, the theory blows up. Now, Siraj Penrobes would like to do the opposite. He would like to uh, gravitize quantum mechanics. Now, I wish him well. I wish that he becomes successful in this pursuit, but we'll wait and see. The proof is in the pudding. So far, the only theory which allows you to unify these two great branches is string theory. Is string theory correct? I don't know. However, it's the only game in town. There's no other rival theory that has matched the sophistication of string theory. And string theory, very simply, is a theory of music. Think of music. How many notes are there in a violin string? A, B flat, C sharp just like subatomic particles. So this, for example, would be an electron. This would be a proton, a neutron, neutrinos. They're nothing but different vibrations of a tiny string. And so what are subatomic particles? Subatomic particles are basically notes created by a vibrating string. Well, what is physics? Physics is the laws of harmony of these vibrating strings. What is chemistry? Chemistry is the theory of interacting strings which create molecules and, and matter. What is the universe? The universe is a symphony of strings. And then what is the mind of God that Albert Einstein wrote about eloquently for the last 30 years of his life? What would be the mind of God? The mind of God would be cosmic music resonating through 11-dimensional hyperspace. That would be the mind of God. Many scientists believe that the ultimate goal of physics is unification, to unite the left hand and the right hand of the universe, to unite quantum mechanics with relativity, to create a relativistic theory of quantum mechanics. That is the ultimate goal. So far, the only theory, the only theory which has survived all challenges is string theory. Now that doesn't mean it's correct. 
because we can't test the theory because the theory talks about particles that have energies far beyond anything that we can create on the planet Earth. In other words, we are too primitive to test string theory. String theory is out there. It exists. We can play with it, but we can't test it because it talks about universes beyond our everyday comprehension. So some people say, well, maybe I don't like string theory. Give me an alternative. And the truth is, there is none. There is no alternative to string theory. Many people have tried. The greatest minds of science, people like Heisenberg and Wolfgang Pauli and Schrodinger, they all tried. They all tried to unite quantum mechanics and relativity, but they failed. String theory is the only survivor. One of the goals of physics is to find a unifying principle, a principle which will allow us to explain so many things. And for me, it was a question when I realized that string theory is a theory of music. What paradigm of human behavior allows us to explain so many things about the world? Music. Music captures emotions. It captures feelings. It can create new worlds. And it is the only paradigm that we have of everyday life that allows us to have a unified understanding of the world around us. The world of emotions, the world of feelings, all of it encapsulated in vibrating strings. And so it was the realization that vibrating strings is a paradigm. In fact, the only paradigm that is rich enough to explain the entire universe. Some people say, well, string theory is nice, but so what? I mean, what's in it for me? What's in it for numero uno? Why should I care about string theory? And the answer is that everything around us is a byproduct of string theory, including life, including the richness of our world around us. Think of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is what makes life possible. How do we get carbon dioxide, sunlight, and create oxygen and food from it? This is an amazing feat of nature. And yet, what makes it possible? Quantum mechanics. Because without quantum mechanics, atoms fly apart. Think of a solar system, for example. You have planets going around the sun. And let's say we have two solar systems that collide. What happens? Boom. They fly in all directions because the theory of gravity does not give you stability. A theory of gravity cannot create stable matter. Solar systems will collide and have collided and will basically throw planets apart. In other words, classical physics is unstable. Newtonian physics is inherently unstable. You cannot create a universe out of Newton's theory. However, gravity, which is quantum mechanical, can create waves, and waves of stability. All of a sudden you get molecules. All of a sudden you get tremendous molecules like DNA comp composing of thousands of atoms. In a Newtonian universe, it would all disintegrate. Photosynthesis is impossible. Life is impossible in a classical world. In a classical world where particles go around to other particles, what do they do when they bump into each other? They fly apart. In other words, quantum mechanics gives you stability. It gives you stable atoms, atoms which give you life, atoms which give our body. Let's say I turn off quantum mechanics. Let's say, boom, by magic, I make quantum mechanics disappear. What happens? I disappear. I dissolve. I dissolve into a collection of Newtonian particles that... We are quantum mechanics. We are byproducts of quantum mechanics. Without quantum mechanics, we would dissolve. Quantum mechanics is what holds atoms together. Newtonian mechanics of Isaac Newton is not sufficient 
to create stable matter. Look at solar systems. If solar systems collide, they fling, particle, they fling planets apart. Things are unstable. So in other words, why do we need quantum mechanics? To create stable matter. Without quantum mechanics, you dissolve. You dissolve in an ocean of mist. You dissolve in a mist of subatomic particles.